This is a demonstration of total elbow arthroplasty using a paratricipital tricep sparing approach. For orientation, this is radial, ulnar, proximal, and distal. A posterior incision is marked approximately 15 centimeters in length, centered just lateral to the olecranon. The subcutaneous tissue is incised down to the level of the triceps fascia. A full thickness flap is raised medially to expose the ulnar nerve. A Gelpi retractor is placed medial to the triceps muscle to locate the ulnar nerve posterior to the intermuscular septum. The ulnar nerve is carefully dissected out proximally, up to the level of the arcade of struthers. The decompression is then carried distally as far as the first motor branch to the FCU. Here we see identification of the first motor branch to the FCU. A Hohmann retractor is placed posteriorly and subperiosteally on the humerus to aid in triceps reflection. We reflect the distal one-third of the medial triceps off the humerus. This begins to open the medial window. Next, we subperiosteally elevate the medial collateral ligament and FCU off the medial side of the ulna. The flexor pronator mass is then elevated off the medial epicondyle of the humerus to aid in exposure of the joint. A Hohmann retractor is then placed anteriorly in front of the humerus and the remaining capsule is reflected. This completes the exposure of the medial window. Next we begin to make our lateral window. A full thickness flap is raised laterally to identify the junction of the triceps and brachialis. The lateral triceps is mobilized off the intermuscular septum. This incision is extended into the interval between Ancaneus and ECU. Care must be taken to avoid injury to the radial nerve which is located 15 centimeters proximal to the lateral epicondyle as it passes through the intermuscular septum. The lateral collateral ligament and common extensor mass are elevated off the lateral epicondyle. This allows for better visualization of the joint. The distal humerus can now be delivered through the lateral window to expose it for implantation. The colored anatomical spool is compared to the capitellum and the appropriately sized component is selected. We remove the central portion of the trochlea up to the level of the proximal olecranon fossa using an oscillating saw. The humeral canal is then opened using a high-speed burr. It is further opened using a T-handle canal finder. The humerus is then sequentially reamed using flexible reamers. The distal humeral cutting guide is then applied. The initial cuts are defined using an oscillating saw. Once this has been finished, the humeral guide is removed. The humeral cuts are then completed using an oscillating saw. Humeral brooches are then used up to the appropriate size. The humeral trial is then inserted. The radial head and ulna preparation then begins. This starts with exposure of the radial head. The ulnar cutting guide is applied, making sure the anatomical spool sits within the ulna and that it is aligned with the radial head. A bell saw is used to remove bone from the proximal ulna. The radial neck cut is then defined using an oscillating saw. The cutting guide is removed. We save the bone from the ulna for bone grafting of the anterior humeral flange. We then complete the resection of the radial head using an oscillating saw. The intramedullary canal of the ulna is open with a high-speed burr. Flexible cannulated reamers over a ball tip small guide wire are used to sequentially open the ulnar canal. We then sequentially broach the ulnar canal up to the appropriate size component. The ulnar trial component is then placed within the canal. The humeral trial is malleted into place. A 5 mm radial broach is then placed in the radius down to the level of the neck cut. The appropriate size trial radial head is then placed on the radial stem. The joint is then reduced and the trial ulnar cap is put in place. 
The elbow is taken through a range of motion. Note that the triceps has remained intact throughout the procedure. Intraoperative fluoroscopy can be performed to ensure adequate sizing and positioning of components. Our technique for cementing is to use a small cement gun, cement restrictors, and runny cement to pressurize the canal. The lateral window is closed distally by suturing the ancaneus fascia to the ECU and forearm fascia. The medial window is closed distally by suturing the medial collateral ligament and FCU to the ulnar periosteum and forearm fascia. Because the triceps was not detached during the procedure, it does not require protected rehabilitation. Early and aggressive active extension can thus be performed.